Real Talk for Women of Faith. We are your hosts. I'm Marzette McGarry Hawkins. I'm Nicole Rivas. And we have Joan Carter Lee by phone. Joan, you there? Yes, I am. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Joan. Hi, Joan. Good to hear your voice. Good. <laughs> Ladies, we always want to remind you that Real Talk for Women of Faith endeavors to empower women with God's truths for everyday life situations. Real Talk is brought to you by Inner City Women of Faith. If you want to learn more about our ministries, visit our website at innercitywomenoffaith.org. That's innercitywomenoffaith.org. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Instagram, like us on Instagram and Facebook at Real Talk for Women of Faith. Now, our topic for today, again, is a continuance from last week which is entering into God's rest. This is a wonderful topic. It's a topic that we all need, especially during this season in our country. We are honored again to have our guest, Unitha El Muhammad, who is leading us in this topic. Um, Unitha is, she has so much, uh, just a, a, an amazing background in ministry and in service. And so we talked about it last week. If you want to learn more about Unitha El Muhammad, you can, you can find her information at thehealingspecialist.net. That's thehealingspecialist.net. Or you can look at our web, at our Facebook and our Instagram pages, and you'll find her information there. Um, Unitha, are you, are you there? Yes, I am. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Good, Good to, to see have you again. You again. <laughs> Good to have you again. Now, th this topic on rest ended last week at a really, um, we all thought it was a really uh, pivotal point because yes. it's it's essential for rest. Now, but I want to back up. I want to back up a little bit just to give our listeners um, a, a, a picture of what we talked about last week as it related to entering into God's rest. We talked about how important it is and the reason it's important is because when we learn to rest in God, meaning meaning let go, allow our minds, will, emotions, and our in our activities to just stop and relax and let go, then we're able to hear God, get instruction from God. It aligns us with God so that we can um, do what he wants us to do to fix our problems in life, not all the things that we try to do to fix problems that usually just end up causing us more stress and everybody around us more stress and it just ends up being a, a snowball of of more stress right so yes. um yes we, we talked about that last week um anything else you want to mention that we talked about last week in well terms of one rest? of the things that the scripture that came to mind about when we were talking last week is matthew 16 26 and the new living translation says and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Mm. Is anything more than your soul? Mm. And so that's what when we're in the busyness of going, 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 and we don't take time to enter into um, his rest to fortify, refresh, and connect with our soul. And mm. so... Um, it's it's true if it, getting into his rest helps to bring clarity it helps to bring peace but most of all it gets us in alignment with god's will for our lives mm. right. so, so then so then when you say we talk, when we talk about entering into god's rest let's quickly tell the audience what you said last week of how we enter into his rest mm -hmm. how, how well we, we enter we enter into his rest uh through our spiritual disciplines that's one way um, one way with our spirit, when I say spiritual disciplines, for those who may not know, when I use a term like that, that's our prayer. That's our meditation. That's our study of God's word. That's, uh, reading our morning devotional. Um, that's that time where we're setting aside for God. Um, so entering into his rest can be done through our spiritual disciplines. Another way and worship. I'm sorry, I left that part out. Worship, praise and worship is another spir uh, spiritual discipline. So, and you um, said solitude. If, I liked that one last and, week, and too. And that's what I was going to go number oh, two. Okay, and number sorry. Two I'm like, I didn't want you to miss it because that really blessed me. Yeah, number two is solitude. And solitude means stepping away, getting in an isolated place, a quiet place with mm -hmm. you and God. 
So mm -hmm. it means where sometimes in our spiritual disciplines, like for me, if I'm just saying I'm going to spend time with God, you know, I may put on my favorite worship song. I may start worshiping, start praising God, you know, have my Bible with my scriptures going out, whatever. But solitude says I'm going to be still. Now, one of the things I do is I practice deep breathing exercises to help my body and everything come at rest, too. Mm -hmm. So I breathe in my nose, out my mouth. And I get, I just settle everything down when I'm in solitude. I, mm -hmm. I just take those breaths until I feel totally relaxed, till I feel totally, okay, I'm not, my mind isn't racing. My thoughts aren't racing. I'm at rest. And then I just close my eyes and I say, Lord, your servant is here. You know, speak. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say to me today? I'm here. I'm listening. And I will obey. Mm -hmm. and I just get quiet and I always and I told you guys one of the tools I have in my time with God is always my journal and a pen <laughs> I'm a writer God yeah. moves with me with writing some people it may be your laptop some people it may be your phone and your notes in your phone but there needs to be a place I believe when you're spending time with God in solitude or in rest where you can document what he said to you mm -hmm. you know i think that's really important Perfect. because Perfect. i journal too mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and um what i have noticed about journaling is that it quiets my judgment on what i'm hearing yes mm -hmm. and what Good i know yeah. And yeah. what i mean by that and and you need that you picked it up right away so i know you know what i'm saying <laughs> yes is that when you're just sitting there kind of listening to god and you hear something that sounds like, is that God or that's yeah. strange or I don't understand how that fits or God, I'm talking to you about the job and you're talking about my husband or whatever it is. When you're just kind of receiving it, your brain starts judging. When you're writing, in my experience, the Holy Spirit is talking so fast yeah. that yep. you are yes. just focused on trying to get it down, right. what you're yes. hearing. Yes. And so yes. since you're focused on trying to get it down, you're not judging it. All you're, that not, you're, not judging. Not you're not judging. Your you're not yeah. doing all that stuff. You're yeah. just trying to get it down on paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then after it's on paper, then you look at it then and you, process it. Yeah, you could look at it. You could process it. You could say, God, is that you? Give me confirmation. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. do all that stuff, but you haven't missed what God was trying to say by trying to judge it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's good. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's good. And then you're talking about that judgment, and I know we're going to get to this week because we left off last week at a pivotal point with trust. Yeah. But also when you said that, Nicole, it made me think about how – also, we have to learn not to judge our thoughts mm. as right or wrong, mm. but that they're thoughts. Mm -hmm. We have to get ourselves off the hook. Um, I lead a group with the staff at Faithful Central and uh, where I work, and I lead a staff group there. And we're actually using a book that's talking about entering into his rest or the soul of the leader. And um, in there, we're learning how not to judge ourselves and our thoughts are right or wrong um, based on, um, you know, we get in this place where, why did I think that? Why, why, mm. You know, I'm so stupid. I'm so this, I'm so that. <laughs> Instead of saying that that thought that came to you, it serves a purpose as well. That thought that we would normally say is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, in the book, it talks about consolation and desolation. So it's so the thought that, oh, you you missed that, um, you didn't uh, complete that, is just as beneficial as I love you, I care for you, I know what's best for you. Mm -hmm. You get it? So knowing that you missed the mark is just as, as beneficial, and so God uses them both. Yes. And so just saying that this is information that I need to to move forward to be the best that I can be. And so sometimes what we've learned is in our time with God, God is telling us these great things about us, but we only focus on how we miss the mark. Mm 
That's mm. the point I'm getting. We, we focus on, oh, God told me how I need to be better friend. God told me how I need to do this. But we miss that God said, you're my precious one. I'm there for you. And I know what's best for you. And I have this plan and this plan, I'm working it out. And that actually, if you just hold on, it's coming. But we're focused on the other part, which gets us to a place of always feeling like we have to be working on something. We always have mm. to be doing better. We have to be better, which then leads us to striving and lead us to works. Instead of looking at it and saying, you know, God told me there's some things I need to work on. But you know what? God told me I'm also doing a great job yeah. and I'm being a great mother and I'm doing these things great. So it helps us to have a more balanced view of ourselves and not a, a view of I'm such a wretched mess <laughs> and I can't do anything because I'm such a wretch. You yeah. know? <laughs> and, and I think it's important because as you were speaking, I and I want to get back to trust because that's our focus but mm -hmm. i think this is a really important point and i don't want the audience to miss what you said because i know someone out there just like me when she said don't judge your thought you heard that bible verse take every, take every thought, thought into, into captivity, captivity. Yeah. <laughs> the same thing. I, I, I know was thinking, I, was, I, I was gonna try to yes, figure that out yes, yes so, so i i know you heard it mm -hmm. right yes. because we've been pounded with that I want you to hear what she's saying. Mm -hmm. She is not saying think anything crazy and allow yes. that to hang out in your brain. Yes. Right. That yes. is not what she's That's saying. That's not what she's saying. What mm -hmm. she was talking about is not judging the thought, but judging yourself for yes. having the thought. Right. Yes. Right. And there is a difference. There you go. Difference. Clear it up, Nicole. Yes. There's a difference. <laughs> yes. A lot of times you might have a lot of thoughts swimming through your thoughts head. Come, yeah. Thoughts come, thoughts go. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you do not then start condemning yourself because of some thought that tried to tiptoe through your head. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You instead make a note. Oh, wait, wait, that thought came. So then just like if I had a best friend that I want to talk to my thoughts about, I would be like, you know, I was thinking blah, blah, blah. What do you think of that? Mm -hmm. That's God. Yes. That's yes. God. Yeah. And because I'm not judging myself for that thought, then I'm can, actually I'm able, to. able to talk to God honestly about it yeah. instead of hiding. That's it. Instead of hiding and not allowing him to bring truth and light to that thing. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what she's trying to speak to you. Yeah. So don't hear that Bible verse, take every thought into captivity and, and ignore and, what and she was that, saying. And think that we're saying yeah. don't, or the don't difference do that. Is, I think we're yeah. saying the, the opposite. Yeah, yeah. We're not. the difference is too, Nicole, mm -hmm. if you got a thought that says, um, you're a loser, you're stupid, God is not going to tell you that. Amen. That's right. 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 Amen. Right. Taking right. that thought right. captive. Right. Because right. God is not going to tell you that. Mm -hmm. God may say that wasn't a wise choice over there. Mm -hmm. That thing you did yesterday, do you think that was the best best choice you could have made in that situation? You know, God may ask you that question, which then will let you have a series of thoughts to get to the answer. But God is not going to say, boy, wasn't that a stupid choice yesterday? <laughs> and, no, I got to take that thoughts captive because then... I'm going to label myself as stupid. Right. Yes. If I think that God thinks I'm stupid, then I'm stupid. If I think that God thinks I'm a failure, then I'm a failure. Mm -hmm. It's taking those thoughts and you hit the nail on the head, um, Nicole, when you said, because then when we're not judging ourselves and labeling ourselves falsely through, through thoughts that are not what God has for us, then we can be, number one, we can show up in our time of rest authentically. Mm -hmm. We can hear him. And then we learn how to filter that stuff in his rest and, and say, okay, that wasn't a good thought when I was jealous the other day. Mm -hmm. I can now say, Lord, now I give that jealousy to you and I let you heal it. And I trust, now we're getting on the trust part, and I trust that you're going to make it good and you're going to make it right. Mm. And, and you're going to show me how to do it. And I Very trust good. that when I confess to you that I had a jealous or a not good thought, I trust that you aren't judging me for it. 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you're loving me through it. That you're loving because who wants to confess and talk to somebody who's always judging you? Yes. Nobody yes. wants to do that. So yes. if that's what you think God is, that's why most people can't do solitude. You're right. And, yeah. and can't do being in God's rest mm -hmm. because yes. it requires too much quiet. Yes. And, and when you're quiet, those thoughts that you're running away from. Mm -hmm. Yes. You they hear them loud and clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they yep. you do. You do, <laughs> Nicole. You do. So a lot of people, because they feel so judged or so guilt or guilty or so full of shame, mm -hmm. they are constantly running from silence. Yeah. 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 Because That's you're true. right. Because all those past experiences, all those choices, all those things, all that regret comes tumbling in in the solitude. But what you learn is. Let them come. Let them come on, pass on through, <laughs> but you're not keeping them. You let them pass them. through. But what it is, you guys, on the other side of that is healing. Mm. Because when you continually, that's why it's a consistent practice. It's not something you do one time. You consistently enter into his rest. You enter into his rest because God is doing some healing in that. He's doing some a revelation in that he's showing you who you are in that so god can show you that yeah there's some places in you that you're envious and jealous of people and so in that god is not going to persecute you for that he's going to say now let's 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 come together with this and let and let me heal that exactly let me, let me restore you in that and then as you go in that process of continuing to enter into his rest and then get your instructions on what to do when you're out of the restful place, then you will see your life start to transform. True. And I, I, I want to give this example. I have a very good friend who <laughs> she's so cute. I just love her. And one time we were sitting around having a discussion and I said to her, okay, are you ready for truth? Mm. <laughs> because you know when you get ready to tell someone truth you got to ask permission first because mm -hmm. they might that's not true. be in the space for it yet mm -hmm. that's so, so true, i because... asked her okay i heard you now are you ready for truth mm -hmm. and she was so cute she said okay and she got ready right she yeah, moved her little arms she put her little <laughs> put her little hands up and she said Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> she got she got ready. She got in position and got ready and like kind of clenched and was like, "Okay, give it to me." Mm -hmm. And I had to laugh. And then mm -hmm. I told her and then we work, you know, she's a, she's a person who can handle truth. So, you know, we as a group talk through it. But I as you were talking, you need that I too have experienced where I know I did something bad and I'm avoiding prayer. Because yes. I know, I already know when I show up, God's going to be like, mm-hmm, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. I also know that by the end of that prayer, I'm going to feel better. Yes. But that mm -hmm. initial ouch of yes. having to yes. deal with what yes. I did or what I said, sometimes I want to avoid it. And yes. and just as you were talking, Unitha, God was telling me and showing me, you can talk to me. Like your friend talked to you, you yes. can say, you can yes. say to me, yes. you can say to me, God, I'm not, I, I'm not ready. I just, I just need you yeah. to love on me. I, I do that. I'm not ready. I, do yeah. I, say, well, I don't want to talk about it yet. I, I know I need to. I know you want. You know I'm like, but I'm like, no. I <laughs> since I've been married, that's been something real happened often. I'm like, okay, Laura. I know I shouldn't have said that, but I don't want to talk about it yet. <laughs> I know I shouldn't have said that, but I don't want to talk about that. Yet. I mean, I wait a few days. So yeah, and, and you know, and and, and our, our, our God is so loving. But the thing is that you you are right. We do know that once we do allow Him in, it gives yeah. us a sense of peace. Yeah. Right. Every it's, it's but it's the initial it's the out. Initial, like I don't want to talk about it. Oh, I'm yeah, talking about you know what, you guys, <laughs> even with that initial ouch, what you learn in entering into his rest on a consistent basis is that God is okay with you're not being ready. Because mm. God already knows you're not ready. Mm -hmm. So we don't even have that's to be true. afraid that's to true. say, I'm not ready yet. You know, that's part of the gift of free choice and mm. free will. He knows yeah. when we're going to be ready to deal with something. And so we don't even have to act like we're ready when we're not ready. 
<laughs> you know, we don't have to be like, okay, Lord, but you know you're not going to do nothing God told you in that time. <laughs> it's like, I ain't doing it. I'm sorry. I still got to be with him, Lord. It. I know you told me to forgive, but I ain't feeling that right now. <laughs> um, God already knows that, and that's the wonderful thing about God's grace and mercy. It yeah. abounds so much in us. Yeah. And yeah. so that's what I love about solitude and entering to his rest. Because we then, now we're getting into the topic for this week, have to trust that God is with us and that God is on the case. Mm. We have to trust that. Mm. We have to trust that. Mm. You know, one, one thing that lately God has been saying to me is trusting his love. So when yes. I, because that has to do with, with rest, because if I'm going to decide to let go of whatever the issue is, if I'm going to decide to let go and try to listen to God and try to follow his instruction, mm -hmm. if I'm going to try to do all these things, then I have to trust him. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so what he was saying to me was trust his love. He said, trust that I love you. So um, when I let go, don't feel like letting go means I'm losing control. I am losing control, but in, but in reality, yes. I want to lose control. Like, so so he was, he's been teaching me to trust his love and that will help me enter into rest. That will help right. me let go. Yes. So what I, what I've been doing lately is just saying, Lord, I thank you that you love me. Lord, I trust your love. And, and, and that sounds so basic, especially I think maybe for people who are, who are leaders and who've been Christians a long time, because we're, we're always taught God loves you. God loves you. But I don't know if we really meditate on his love. Because yeah. If, if we do then it would be quite easy. I mean, I think about, you know, I, I mean, I always use my son as an example because he's just a brat to me, but he trusts my love. So he, he, he's always at the point where he's like, well, mommy, well, you know, he's very, he's very matter of fact about things, very expecting, very, you know, very just dependent on me, you know, mommy, this or that, because he trusts my love. Um, he, he, he trusts that I'm going to do everything good for him and toward him and what, whatever's in my power to, to do to make his life great. That's what I'm going to do. He, he totally trusts that. Well, we, we serve the God of the universe, like the creator of the universe and he loves me so I can rest. Like if, if I really right. get a revelation right. of that, it, it makes it easier to let go, right. listen, yeah obey right yeah. but yeah um i think the struggle is really rooted in not trusting but really not trusting his love can i share this and not understanding his love yeah yeah can i share this and i th from the beginning when you were talking unitha about entering his rest and remember we said last show that the only verse or one of the few verses where god says work mm -hmm. is when he says labor to enter Mm -hmm. my rest. Mm -hmm. And we were saying because that is difficult. It's not that it's difficult to rest, but it's difficult to trust. Mm -hmm. To trust. Yeah. To trust. And and trust. so what you're laboring to do is trust. Now your son, it's not that hard for him to trust you. Mm -hmm. You have done the kind of job that he just assumes that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You haven't disappointed him to the extent where that's hard for him to do. Yeah. And the image that came to my head when we were talking about labor and fighting and even trusting mm -hmm. is this. Imagine yourself, you're a mighty warrior, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And there's a beautiful garden about 20 feet in front of you that's completely safe. Mm -hmm. But in between you and the garden, there's dragons, <laughs> there's an army. <laughs> there is all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. and you have to pick up your sword and you have to fight your way all the way to the garden. And when you get in the garden, you can just sit and rest mm -hmm. because you are completely safe there. Mm -hmm. Well, that is us laboring to get into his rest. We have the dragon of doubt. We have the soldier of disappointment. Yeah. We That's have what yeah. you watched on CNN standing in front of you with its big sword. Mm -hmm. We have what so-and-so told you and what you heard about so-and-so and yeah. this person and that happened to them and that happened to them. And all those things are standing between you 
and your garden of rest. Yes. Yes. And you've got to take your sword and cut them all down Mm -hmm. to get to the garden of rest. The more, the more you fight that fight, the less things you have to fight to get to the garden. Mm -hmm. So don't be surprised that when you first start, it's more of a battle. Mm -hmm. But trust me, it gets easier. It's like playing the same video game over and over again. You know how to kill the the villains. It gets easier. It gets easier. easier. Our time. Well, just what you you have to say. Yeah, go ahead. You need them. We want to hear Um, from you. Part of why people don't enter into his rest or it's hard is because you hit the nail on the head is disappointment Mm -hmm. where they felt like God has not shown up for them. And um, disappointment will keep us out of the presence of God. We may feel that God should have showed up for us a certain way. God should have healed a certain particular family member and they ended up passing away. And we were standing, believing God that he was going to deliver and heal and now they're gone. So there are things that, those are the things that stand in the way of people entering into the presence of God um, through just disappointments. And yeah. disappointment is a booger that a lot of times people don't talk about. But disappointments can have people who love the Lord, who have served him for years, be so disconnected from God because they are hurt by how some things have turned out in their lives. Mm-hmm. You need to, I'm going to stop what? you for one second because that is a powerful issue. But our time is up. But our time is up. So we're ah, going to we're go, we're yes. negotiate for another show to deal with that. We need that because <laughs> that's the point, the disappointment. Yeah. And so maybe, yeah. maybe we can talk about at some point hindrances to rest and how do we get past those hindrances to entering into God's rest. That would be a great topic if you need to. Yes. Well, we'll um, Honor us again with her presence. God, you know, this is great. I knew she'd be great. Okay, I'm going to help her out. Let me We're go. going to close out our We're show because yes. she's too excited. Ooh, thank you, Anita, for, for joining us again today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, audience ladies, don't forget to um, join us again next week. We have a new show posting every Tuesday on, on YouTube and our social media. And also um, join us every every week on this on our on our radio broadcast. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube um, page at Real Talk for Women of Faith and like and share our Facebook and Instagram pages. You can submit your prayer request to innercitywomenoffaith.org. That's innercitywomenoffaith.org. You can also contact us there. And we want to thank you again for joining us for Real Talk for Women of Faith, which is brought to you by Inner City Women of Faith. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Okay. Praise the Lord. Right. Money, 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 money,